Uh, oh, yeah, it says oh. All right, so we are live, and hopefully this is going to work okay. We will just wait a couple of minutes, so that way anyone who just got a notification to come hither, um, we'll let you guys kind of join on, and then we will start. And I will be posting this on my blog, and it will be on my YouTube channel after the webinar is over. So that way, if you guys like it, or if you're jumping on late, or whatever, you can watch the beginning. Um, Mine will also be on all of the the blog, my YouTube. I'll probably post a link um, in my Instagram, or at least link it through my blog on the Instagram. Um, Probably throw one up on Twitter and Pinterest and just all basically cover all of the places, Facebook, everywhere. Spam all of you with everything because we're awesome. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Okay, um, so I guess we'll just start because I think people can like start from whatever point. Um, so we'll just start with introductions. You can go first, Kaylee. Okay, so I'm Kaylee. Hello, everyone. Um, I have my blog, which is Bright Colors, Happy Things. Um, it's a blog mostly about business, station, um, basically just being positive and bringing, you know, bringing positivity and organization to a chaotic and beautiful world. Insert my little tagline in there. Um, yeah, I decided to. I found. Stephanie's blog somehow I don't know it was I think I found her YouTube channel and then I found her blog and then I just started stalking her for a few weeks um, and then I reached out to her and then we became friends because she's awesome I'm gonna put in a shameless plug before she does and say if you need design work anything that you need designed blogs any of that my dog won't stop whining um, go to her because she's awesome and she's just Awesome. Awesome. I like the word awesome. Okay, your turn. <laughs> Thank you. You're awesome. Um, yeah, I think you sent me an email. Like, I had seen you comment on my blog and stuff before, and then you sent me an email, like, introducing yourself, and I was like, I started stalking you, and I was like, this girl is like, me, <laughs> we're twins. Um, okay, so I'm Nora. I My site is noraconrad.com. Um, I just moved to Squarespace last week, um, but I like made it live a couple days ago, um, and I'm obsessed with it, so that's kind of why we're doing this webinar, um, and kind of showing you guys like how we are going to transfer Kaylee from WordPress to Squarespace. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> my dog's like trying to eat my food right in front of me. <laughs> feel it from He's my life. <laughs> um yeah so i guess we will go ahead and like do an overview of squarespace so i'm going to show you guys my screen um and what nora conrad looks like from the back end i guess um and show you that first just so that way you kind of have an overview of what it looks like um before we like show you how to transfer your blog to it so let me pull that up Okay, and is it showing? All right, so this is Squarespace. When you first, whoa, first get to the website, um, you can get started down here, which will allow you to make a trial version. Um, and it's a seven-day trial, but if you just verify your email, it actually becomes a 14-day trial. And then if you already have an account, you can log in. And the nice thing is that once you're logged in, it keeps you logged in for a while. So from your own website, if you have a Squarespace website, you can just hit the escape key and it will take you, if I can get the right password, take you to the login. And of course, I can't get my password to work. Ah. Okay, well, let's log in with Google. When in doubt, log in with Google. Oh my goodness. Okay, Kaylee, I'm going to let you um, screen share because I need Hi. to figure out what my login is. Okay. Um, 
while we're waiting, feel free to tweet at us. Um, I'm at Bright and ha Bright Happy Planner with P L N R. Um, you can see Stephanie just in. Um, mm -hmm. Tweet at us, Instagram us, Facebook us, what is it, whatever. <laughs> yes, I know. Yay. Okay, so I'm in Squarespace, Stephanie. I don't know if she can hear me. Okay, yeah, I can. Sorry. Um, so just, I guess we'll just go through and show, like, the basics. So when you go to your main menu, there, um, well, when you first log in, you're going to see the main menu on the left sidebar. So, Kaylee, do you just want to kind of show what's in each menu, I guess? Sure. Um, actually... Let's, because I have, I've had a site before, so this gray thing that you're seeing right here um, is actually my previous site. Um, so basically I just skipped everything and redid it. Let's start with create a new site, because I think I'm still sharing a screen with you. Um, I think. Yeah, you are. <laughs> okay. I have no idea how this works. Um, so these are just basically you choose a template and you go through and you find one and you go, yeah, I like that one. That looks cool. I want to activate it. Um, and so let's activate mine so that way you can see um, just where we start off from the beginning. Um, and mine, I already know I like this one. So it, it's going to take you into a little preview. It's going to give you different uh, examples that you can see all down at the bottom if you want to look at them. So if you look at this one, um, it can, you can search through it, go through the actual website and like click through different buttons. And then you can say create a blog like this, but I don't want to. I want the top one. Oh, wait. Come back. There it is. So I want this one and I wanted this design. And it just said uh, um, that's because that's just because I've already had a website. So ignore that button. Um, okay. So the new platform. I did finally get logged into my website. So once you're done showing that, I'll jump on. Okay. So um, it just says that, that site purpose. Um, I'm just going to be using it for business for my blog. Kind of the same thing. Gives me the option to add um, commerce in the back end if I really wanted to and upgrade and do all of that. And my site name is Bright Colors Happy Things because that's my blog name. Click Next. And then add my name. I don't want to add my address because I'm not weird like that. And I'm from San Diego or in San Diego. And hold on. Done. And that's what that looks like. Um, I have the menu that's... It's a trial account right now. I haven't upgraded or anything, um, but I have the menu right here. If you we want to go through that, or Stephanie, do you want to keep going, or we want to switch over to you? Yeah, I'll go through that. Um, just because I have the pages set up, so it might be a little easier to see how it is set up. So this is the back end of Nora Conrad. Um, so on the left, you have your menu. And there's a lot of different options, so I'm just going to go through quickly, and we'll kind of show you more options as we go. And can you all see my screen? I can. Okay. <laughs> so the first one is pages. Um, obviously, this is all of your pages. So there's three areas. There might be additional footer areas or other sidebars, depending on your theme. But mine has three. Um, so you have your main navigation. I have footer navigation, and then there's an area that's called not linked. And this is where you can put different pages if they're not ready yet, or if you don't want it to show up in the navigation, you would put it in this area. Um, so this is where you add all of your pages. You can add a bunch of different type of types of pages. This is also where you can add your blog. Once you have a blog, if you click on the blog page, that will open up all of your actual blog post where you can edit and create them. And then you just hit back and it takes you back to the main menu. The design menu is exactly that. It's where you change the design. You can um, change the theme from here, the template. You can add all of your information and you can kind of customize it from here. The commerce 
menu is basically if you have a shop, this is where how you would set it up and where you would edit all the inventories and the prices and all that good stuff. Metrics is basically your analytics. So any you can like see how many viewers you have, what pages they're visiting, where they came from. Um, I actually really like the metrics on here. I used Google Analytics for a long time and I still don't understand it, but the metrics on Squarespace are just super easy to understand and super easy to kind of improve on. Settings is where you will edit things like your domain name, emails. Um, also, if you go into advanced, this is where you're going to import and export um, your website content, which is what we're basically doing today with Kaylee's website. And then the last one is help, which will open up a new tab and take you to the help area on Squarespace. And they are awesome. I mean, any questions that you have on here, they have guides, videos, all kinds of good stuff um, to like help you out and get started. So I think, wow, that gets crazy. Um, Inception. I think we'll probably go ahead and start moving your website to Squarespace. Um, and just do that on here and take it step by step. Okay. Um, how do we start? Okay. So, I guess we'll start. Go ahead and do a screen share and go on Squarespace. And I'm just going to kind of talk you through it, and you kind of do as I say, and yeah. we'll do it like that. I can do that. Okay. So I'm on my web blog thing. Okay, so you want to start by clicking on the settings. Okay. And then go to advanced. And under advanced, you're going to go to the import and export area. Okay. So we're going to import your WordPress site. So you click on import. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be WordPress. It can be any of those things on there. So go ahead and choose WordPress. Alrighty. And this is basically what, where you're going to log in like you would normally on your WordPress website. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing additional is your WordPress URL. Oh, wait. Well, now they got my password and all that. Oh, well. <laughs> so now you'll see on the left side, it is starting to import all of your information. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you choose a theme or a template, it's automatically going to give you pages and stuff. So while that's importing, you can go back to the main menu. Hold on, it said it failed because I'm awesome. Oh, <laughs> we don't know our passwords to anything apparently. No, I don't. Um... I mean... Then and I wrote it down too. There it goes. There we go. Okay, logging right. in. Hold on. It's logging in. Let's make sure it doesn't fail and we keep going to do stuff and then it decides that you just wasted your time. <laughs> Shh. My dog is like, pay attention to me. Importing blog. All right. There it I think it's okay. okay. So now you can go back to your main menu. And from here, we're going to delete all of the pages that were automatically filled in um, with the template. So if you hover over a page on the left side, you'll see a little trash can. You just yes. want to trash all of those pages. Oh. All of them? Yep. Okay. And if you ever accidentally delete a page that you didn't mean to, down at the bottom you can see a little trash can that says deleted pages. If you click yep. on that, you can see all the pages that you deleted, and you can put them back in there. Nice. Um, okay, so let's see. Now okay. you can see there's a ton of stuff um, on the little sidebar, and that's everything that was imported from your WordPress site. Wow. And they're all kind of faded. Yeah. That's because you need to actually enable the page. So just go to your homepage or um, 
just any page really, whichever you'd like to activate. Mm -hmm. This one. This is my actual blog. Okay, so, if you, so if you scroll up, you can click on that little gear. Uh huh. Gear clicky thing. I don't know what it's called. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you'll see that under the page title, there's a little checkbox near enabled. If you check that box, that will make your page live. It's then hit <laughs> Um, yeah. And this is where you can, so go ahead and hit save, and then if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see that you can set that as your home page. Um, where do I set it as the oh, home page? Oh, I'm sorry, go back into the settings for that page, oh, yeah. the little gear. Sorry, your video is lagging a little, so I'm behind. Oh, down here. Um, set as home page, okay. And then once you have that saved, um, you can drag that page up into the navigation area, which will actually add it to your navigation bar, and then people can go to your site and actually see it. Yay! So that's how you add your pages. Um, let's go ahead and add your domain name. Okay. And that way... Any other changes we make, we know if we're making correctly. So yeah. go into settings. Okay. Domains. Yep. Okay. And you want to connect a third-party domain. If you don't already have a domain name, you would want to click get a domain, or you'd want to sign up for one through another host, and then, again, choose third-party domain. Mm, mine's under Bluehost. Yep, and that is automatically chosen most of the time. So then you can connect the domain. And from here, I'm going to switch to my screen and show you guys okay. how I set mine up, I guess. I'm going to stop sharing. Okay. So. Uh, let's see. Okay, so when you look at my domain you'll see that all of my, under current data, it says that everything is correct. Under Kaylee's, it says that stuff is incorrect or there's something else filled in there. I'm gonna show you where you would change that information. So you would want to go to wherever your domain is hosted. For Kaylee, it is Bluehost. You want to click on domains. Bluehost is moving slow today. Okay, and then you want to manage the DNS records. And this is where you're going to make all of those changes. So if you go back to Squarespace, you'll see um, it tells you what you need to enter, basically. So under host, you'll see a bunch of different crazy letters. Um, this is where you're going to change it. So you want to go under CNAME, and you'll see this is the record C name. You'll want to copy that. Oh, I'm sorry. I just lied to you guys. You're going to want to come up here. You want to paste that crazy long thing, this, into the host record. The TTL can stay the same. You're going to change the type to C name. And then the points to is going to be right here, this required data. And you want to just paste that in there. Then you can hit add record, and that will pop up down here. Kaylee, I'm going to have to sign into your Squarespace. Go ahead. Um, or you can sign into Bluehost and do it that way. Um, that way we can add your domain. No, you go ahead. <laughs> this okay. is all you. This is okay. your party. So let me... Did you email me that information? I should have, yeah. Okay. Let me Did pull that it? up, and I will... Not screen share yet, because <laughs> um, I don't want your password on everything. Oh, wait. Did I so. send you Squarespace information? I should have. Let me check. <laughs> We're not very well prepared, you guys. This is our first Google Hangout, so I apologize. I have no idea. I what did I'm... not get your Squarespace info. Oh, you did not get it. Okay. 
Um, yeah. Do you want me to shoot it over real quick, or should I just do it? Yeah, just you can just email it to me. Okay. Um, so while you email that to me, we will start talking about templates. Um, so you guys saw that Kaylee is using the Montauk, Montauk, I, I don't I, know how to I say it, pronounce. template. Um, if you are a blogger, certain templates don't have a blog sidebar, which is sort of important as a blogger, because um, that's how everyone will be able to kind of better navigate your blog. So I do have a list of templates um, that work with a blog sidebar, and I will, will post that in the description um, after this video is over, just the list of those that do work. Um, and if you're watching this not live, it will be in the blog post and will also be in the description box on the YouTube channel. Um, so that way you guys can pick one that actually has a sidebar. So I'm going to show you how to enable a sidebar if you do have a theme that needs one. So, oh, of course, I logged out. <laughs> Not thinking things through very well. Uh, check out my my email should have gone through. Okay. Should Let's have. see here. So sorry, you guys. <laughs> we are just nobody not said prepared. this okay. was be interesting. <laughs> it, it's it's going to be entertaining. Uh, at least it's not boring, you guys. Come on. Yeah. Okay, here we go. I got it. In. So let's switch the full screen. Okay. Yeah, I did give you the right, so, the right password. <laughs> so let me show you how to enable your blog sidebar really quick. You're going to want to go into design and style editor, which will load eventually. Okay. So you can see right now we are on Kaylee's blog page. So you'll be able to see the changes that we make live. Um, so in the style editor, you want to scroll down. I gotta remember where it is. Ha. Um, okay, so uh, oh, do you not hold on, I gotta remember where this is. It's different on every um, template, so you guys might have to kind of dig through and find it. Let's just click here. I hope that yours has one. Yeah, I'm, I had yours on the list, but now I don't see that option. So I wonder if Squarespace changed that with their update. This is all font stuff. What are you looking for? There should be an option to add a blog sidebar. Oh. Um. I do not see it. So I wonder if this template has been updated to not have one. That's kind of weird. Okay, I'm going to change your template for now okay. and then um, to one that I know does have that sidebar. Um, and then you and I can figure that out later okay. instead of trying to figure it out while people are, like, trying to learn things. Sounds good to me. And the nice thing is, is that if you guys want to change your template, you can change it at any time, and all of your content will stay. Unlike on WordPress sometimes, when you try to switch, um, it doesn't always keep all your pages, all your navigation. Um, all of your customization kind of goes away, which is a real bummer. Where is it? Here it is. Okay, so I know 100% that Galapagos does have a blog sidebar. Um, that is the template that I am currently using. Does it? So to install uh, a new template. Sorry, does it import all of everything that I've imported from WordPress? over to the new design? Yep, it does. Oh. Um, the only 
thing is that we will have to go back in and delete the pages that yeah. are not yours. Um, you'll see next to the navigation, it says demo. So, oh, I can't delete the home page. Duh. Okay, so. Once we finally delete all of that, um, we will go ahead and make your blog the home page again. And the pages stay enabled. It keeps all of those settings. The only thing that you have to change is the navigation. Okay, so that is a home page. Now let me show you how to add the blog sidebar. Oh, and it's already here on this template, so that's interesting. Um, if for some reason it wasn't showing up, you would go, I clicked on the wrong thing, you would go into designs, style editor, and under blog, you can enable or disable the sidebar just by using this little checkbox. Oh. Once your sidebar is here, to actually edit the sidebar, all you have to do is go into your pages menu and you just hover over it. You can edit the sidebar content. This is the same for editing any pages. Um, anytime you want to edit something on the actual page, just go into the page menu and then you can hover over anything that you want to edit. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the domain name now. While we are um, transferring over this, I know a lot of people that I was talking to about this webinar um, wanted to know anything about um, the SEO differences between WordPress and Squarespace. What do you think about that? Personally, I used WordPress Squarespace. I used a plugin called Yoast SEO, and I liked it enough, but it wasn't fantastic. Um, unless you really like need to dig in and like use SEO, like if you're a company that has a ton of competition, then you might want to consider WordPress because you can do a little more with SEO. But if you're just a blog or you just have a shop or something, there's really no difference. Um, SEO changes so often that to worry about it constantly is just kind of a waste of time, um, just to be kind of honest. Um, if you are posting great content and you are posting consistently and you have images and you are actually driving traffic, then you won't have any trouble with Squarespace at all. Um, sure. as long as you're doing the work and there is a ton of options for SEO. Like it's not like Squarespace doesn't have any SEO options. They're just a little more limited than WordPress, but that's kind of the same with everything. Oops. Okay. So I'm just kind of going through this. Um, if you guys needed more in depth, like more help with changing your domain name. Squarespace actually has a guide for every different kind of domain name, wherever your host is, they have a guide for every single one. So I will, again, post a link to that because it is different for everyone. And I know that some of this stuff is like really technical, um, but and Squarespace has a guide for everything. So if you don't know how to do anything, check their guides. For someone who, I have no idea, like, how to design, how to do, I'm not a coder, I don't know any of the, like, these are just a bunch of numbers and dots to me, like, they have no real meaning. Um, I was able to actually link my domain name, but um, we're switching over from WordPress to Squarespace, as you know, and this is why I'm having Stephanie do it. Um, but for the most part, like I knew how to do go from GoDaddy to Squarespace. So it's super easy. They've actually streamlined it a lot more since, um, I found out how to do it. So it's even better. Um, just the, the guides are really easy. They're, they're super, they basically take you step by step, just like, just as if someone was 
um, using a video to go ahead and do it. So, I mean, it's it's not a bad idea to go and at least look through it and try it. Yeah, definitely. And it's so user-friendly that if you ever don't know how to do something, there's a guide for it or there's someone to talk to on the other side. And I'm sure um, there's so hundreds of YouTube videos on how to do this. Yeah. Um, so you can see um, when I hit refresh after putting all that information in, it still says that this is wrong. And it's going to say that for a couple of hours. Um, every time you hit refresh, there might be things that change on here, and that's OK. It can take up to four hours for all of this data to be correct. Oh, I just got lucky, and it just says it's all correct. <laughs> um, but just double check yourself. Make sure that everything is in here correctly. And if it is, and it still says this is wrong, don't worry too much. Um, it does take a while to update. Once you hit test connection, it will show you if Squarespace actually got the domain or not. And this did take us to the Squarespace site, which right now is on a trial version, so that's why you can't see it. Um, and you might hit test connection again in five minutes and it won't work. Don't worry, just give it a couple of hours and it will eventually process through. Okay. So um, that's kind of the more technical side of it. And I know it's kind of confusing and I didn't explain that very well, but I will link to the guides because the guides are just really clear and it takes you step by step. Um, so yeah, I think that's a good option. OK, so let's talk about SEO a little bit. And I'll show you where you can edit that, since that was one of your questions. Mm -hmm. um, and it's super easy to do. So um, I think that Squarespace makes it easier to work on. But that's just me. OK, so I have to remember where it is. I think it's under advanced, and it's not. Hmm, where is it? I should have written this stuff down. Oh, maybe it is under here? Yeah, it's under advanced under here, I think. Nope, OK. <laughs> well, while we're in here, goodness, I'm so sorry, you guys. Um, I'm going to show you the design side, I guess, and eventually we'll find SEO. Um, once you first make your site, you're going to want to put all this information in. This is something that will help your SEO. So if you have a tagline for your website, you'll want to put that in. Um, I know that it will show up. We'll just type this in as an example. And if you scroll up over here, well, eventually it will pop up under here. Um, Stephanie, um, if yeah. you go under settings and you click marketing, your SEO is number one. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> As I'm like struggling to find it. Good Floundering time. around, yes. Um, Whoa. I would, my mouse is just jumping around. It's very weird. So settings and marketing, you said? Yep. Oh, duh. Come and on. SEO. OK, so pretty much everything in marketing will help your SEO score, I guess. If It's not really a score. But um, the first thing that you'll want to fill out is obviously your search engine description. This can be um, your tagline, but it's better if you use some keywords in here. So for your website, Kayla, you'd probably want to put something about planners, um, about like optimism and stuff like that because that's what your website is about yeah you can also edit how Google will show your website but usually these like preset things are actually the best option for you um, so that's kind of the basics that you can fill out there's also options for share buttons so if you you want to add in all of your social media accounts and things like that you can definitely do that and I'll show you where to add those um, you can also add your pin it buttons to your face or to your pages so I'll enable this highly highly recommended most definitely even if you like only post one picture every once in a blue moon this is still a really good idea 
even and if you can you change what the have, Pinterest button looks like. Yeah, even if you don't have Pinterest, a lot of other people do, and it'll start growing your account even if you don't have one. Like, it'll grow you an audience on Pinterest, so do it. It doesn't matter. It's one button. Do it. And Pinterest is my biggest refer. Um, and I've heard that from a lot of people. Pinterest is just basically its own search engine, so definitely do it. Um, so once you have done the SEO stuff, you'll want to connect your social media accounts. Um, obviously, this is how people will find you. Kaylee, I'm going to let you jump in and connect your accounts since I don't know your account um, uh, information. I'm not sure I know my account information, but okay, we'll try it. <laughs> okay, so connected accounts. Let's, let's connect Facebook. And I will mention that um, Squarespace doesn't have plugins like WordPress does, but they do have a lot of integrations, and the ones that they have have been tested and they know work. So Squarespace isn't the most secure, I'm sorry, WordPress isn't the most secure because you can install a plugin that would actually install a bug into your website where Squarespace has some awesome security and it just is a little safer than really any other web host. And that's one of the main reasons I switched actually. There's my Twitter handle for everyone who wants to know. <laughs> Dang it. Um, so there was just a question asking about the domain name, if your domain will be live yet or not. And it is live as soon as you add all of the DNS settings. Um, but like I said, it won't always work. So give it about four hours and then it will definitely be live. There's no like publish button that you want to push or anything. Um, but for those first few hours, it will go back and forth from your Squarespace site to your WordPress site. And that amount of time kind of varies depending on where your domain is hosted. It seems to be really easy to connect all of these Google accounts. Yeah, and Squarespace integrates with Google like Amazingly, so if you have your email through Google, um, you can connect your Google Work apps, um, obviously like your Google social media accounts, but you can also add Google Analytics. Um, so if you really like Google Analytics, you can still have that on there. I just personally think that the metrics on Squarespace is a little easier to read and understand. Um, so it looks like that is all of the social media I have right now. Okay, cool. So I will switch back to my screen share. Wow, that's crazy how that happens. Okay. <laughs> um, so like I was kind of showing you, oh, I just refreshed this. So it's going to refresh. Okay. So I typed in the blog tagline when we were in the design area. Um, and you can see that it pops up here. So if you don't want that, I'm going to show you how I hit it. It's a good idea to have a tagline here just for the SEO, but in certain templates, you can't remove it and it looks a little silly. So if you just go into design and style editor, basically what you do is you just make that text the same as your background. So that way it kind of hides it. Um, so let's scroll down under header. You can see the site tagline font when you click on any of these it basically op opens up new options for you um, so what i did to hide mine was just make the text as small as possible oh my mouse just does not want to cooperate um, so you're making everything really small so that way it's not like taking up space or anything like that and then you can just click off of that, and I'm going to change the font color to white, which is the same as your background color. So that way it basically makes it invisible. And 
It's still visible. It didn't change the color. That was weird. Huh. That's so odd that it's not like refreshing. Okay, we'll save that. Um, in a few minutes, that should go away. I don't know what's up with that. It might be that we're both in Squarespace. There you go. Oh, not updated. Weird. Um, yeah, so that's kind of how I hid mine, but I still have like the benefits of it, from, like as far as SEO goes. So the style editor is basically where you're going to customize your entire site. This is where you can change all of your fonts, all of your header um, colors, font information. This is where you can change like your little subscription box. So you'll see that that's automatically added in here. This is where you can change the color for that. Um, so anything that you want to kind of customize, you'll want to do in here. And it is worth mentioning, um, if you do know HTML and CSS, you can customize that in Squarespace. It's not like you're stuck with what you get. If you go to design, you can click on custom CSS and you can actually edit all that and add whatever you want to the design that's already there. Okay. Yeah. So I think the one thing I was nervous about before I switched was how everything would transfer over. Um, that includes like the formatting for everything, all of the blog posts, the pages, like I was worried that the links would be all messed up and stuff like that. And Squarespace does an awesome job of kind of correcting a lot of those issues for you. So if you like linked to other posts within your old site, Squarespace will cor correct most of those links. Every once in a while, there'll be one or two that they couldn't kind of fix. Um, so it is a better idea to start with Squarespace um, and see if you like it. And if you don't, you can switch to WordPress. But if you're switching from WordPress to Squarespace, it is going to take a couple hours to kind of make sure everything is formatted correctly. Um, so the quickest way to do that is to use URL mapping. So if you go to settings and then advanced, you can click on URL mappings and there's an entire guide for this. So again, I'll link to that um, so that you guys can read that. But basically, you can change your links. So for most WordPress websites, if your blog was your homepage, when you typed in brightcolorshappythings.com, it would just take you to the blog. In Squarespace, I would have to type in brightcolorshappythings slash blog. So all of these blog posts, the URL has changed. Um, so to edit that, so that way when people click on links, you don't have to change everything. We can do something like this. Oh, I'm sorry. So we're just going to do a backsplash, a backslash, ooh, English. You want to do this little arrow pointing, hit space, do another backslash, and type blog. Another space and 301. 301 means it's a permanent change. Then we'll just hit save. And what that will do is change. Anytime someone just goes to the home page, it will automatically take them to the blog page. So instead of like when someone clicks on an old pin or something, that took them to like bright colors, happy things, backslash blog post 392 or something. It will instead take them to bright color, happy things, backslash blog slash blog. 392. So we'll kind of correct a lot of those links. Um, and that's going to be a little different in every website. But again, I'll link to the guide on that. So if you need more help with it, um, that'll explain it a little better. And you can kind of customize it to what you need. Um, so that kind of was all the technical stuff, I guess. Um, did you have questions that people were asking you? Because I know I had a few that we can kind of go over. Uh, most of it was SEO related. There wasn't too much, um, too many other concerns. A few people were asking about uh, 
how to actually go through Squarespace and like why they wanted Squarespace over WordPress, um, stuff like that. But that's probably a couple questions that you got too. Yeah, definitely. Um, one of the, I can't remember what it was. I think it was on a Facebook group. Uh, one of the girls was asking if you own the content on Squarespace. So like on Blogger, anything that you post, Google then technically owns that content. Um, so I had to kind of like look it up because I wasn't actually sure. But you do own all your content on Squarespace. Um, if for some reason you stop paying your bill, they have the right to delete your website, but they can't like reuse your content without your permission. So you still own everything that you're putting out there. Um, so I guess that was sort of important. I probably should have known that before switching. But yeah, that was one of the questions. Um, I also know that a lot of people were asking, like, once you switch, like, I guess how to use it, how to make, like, archi archives, archives, um, how to, like, set up new pages and posts and stuff like that. Um, that goes into a lot of detail, and our webinar would be, like, four hours if I did that. So I'm going to do a kind of super long, ridiculously long blog post about all of that. Um, so I'm going to post that on June 1st. So if you want to know more about like the actual Squarespace interface, um, that blog post will kind of go through everything. So that way you don't have to watch an entire video about stuff that you already know how to do. Um, and then there was another question. I didn't write it down. So I'm trying to remember it. Oh, yeah, it was um, a question on one of the links that I posted. Um, I posted something about creating a like password protected page. So on Squarespace, you can protect different pages and just have a set password for those pages. Um, and I was saying that I wanted to maybe use that for like a course or like give people that password who had subscribed to something. Um, and I actually realized that that probably wasn't the best way to do that because I would have to change the password and then email everyone the password. Um, so I had to kind of do some research and find a program or a plugin that would work with Squarespace. And I am using TinyPass. Um, it's basically a paywall. So you just add a little bit of code to whatever page you want to protect. And people have to have a subscription to that page to be able to access it. So I will link to that down below. Um, a lot of like plugins and things that you want to use that worked on WordPress, a lot of times you can use those on Squarespace. You just have to enter some sort of coding to that page. But what's nice about Squarespace is that you can do that if you want to. So if you're not comfortable with coding at all, you don't have to do anything. But if you are like a developer or a designer and you need to be able to do more with your website, there's definitely that option. And as long as you know how to like actually code a little bit, you can add that coding to any web page or the entire site as a whole if you want to. Um, I think those were the only questions that I was asked. Yeah, you want to wrap it up? It's coming on 50 minutes now. Yeah. <laughs> and my, right. my, my puppy Ollie is not happy with me. He wants some attention. <laughs> Yeah, that's like dinner time here, so. Oh, here's my puppy. Hello. <laughs> um, okay, so I will have, like, because this video was sort of a mess, and I'm so sorry, you guys. It was not very well planned. Um, I'm going to make, like, an outline of everything that we did, and I will post that on the blog post, and it, you can get it from the YouTube channel. So that way you can, like, kind of, go off of that instead of like offer back and forth video. Um, and then again, I'm going to post a whole blog post about all of this stuff and go into even more detail on June 1st on the blog. So yeah, I also, think that's everything. Um, also, before we go, um, I know a couple previous Google Hangouts that I've been in um, address the fact that this video won't be on YouTube immediately. I think YouTube has to like finish processing it or something and do color correcting or whatever. Um, so it may take a couple hours to be put up on YouTube, but the link will be up on both of our um, YouTube channels, so be sure to check that out.
Yeah, and if you're watching it from my blog, like on the webinar page, um, it will be available on there too. So Nora Conrad backslash webinar. Um, so you can watch it at any time. And if you guys have any like questions about what we talked about in this video, you can email either of us. Um, my email is hello at noraconrad.com. My email is Kaylee at brightcolorsheavythings.com. Yeah, so pretty easy. Um, and other than that, we'll have everything posted in within the hour. And yeah, you guys have a good night. And thank you for watching our messy Google Hangout. <laughs> Bye. Bye.